Okay, so, are you ready to dive into something wild? Always. Because today we're looking at a story that honestly sounds like something ripped from the headlines. Mm. But it's all too real. Oh, okay. We're talking about Mexico's former top cops. Okay. Gennaro Garcia Luna, you know, the guy responsible for cracking down on cartels. Right. Well, he just got sentenced in a U.S. court for working with those cartels. Wow. I know. I know you've probably heard bits and pieces about this case. Uh-huh. But the details are insane. And this thing has sent shockwaves, not just through Mexico, but way beyond. Yeah. And what's really got people talking is and not just that he was found guilty, but the judge threw the book at him. Yeah. 38 years. That's a long time. That's a lifetime. Yeah. It is. And that's significant. Don't get me wrong. Right. But it was less than some people were expecting. Mm. But I think what really grabbed everyone's attention was how the judge, I mean, he didn't just deliver the sentence. Yeah. It was like he dressed Garcia Luna down in front of everyone. It felt different than a normal sentencing. You know, this was personal. Totally. It was like the judge wanted to show this stark contrast between you know, the Garcia Luna, everyone thought they knew. Right, right. This polished official, always so well-spoken. And then the reality. The truth. Yeah, his actions. And the judge was basically like, look, what you did, it's as bad as what the cartel bosses did. Wow. He actually compared him to El Chapo. And where? Right there in the courtroom. Can you imagine? Wow. It was a powerful moment. Really drives home how serious this whole betrayal was. It's like you can't even write this stuff. This yeah. double life. It's unbelievable. You have this guy... Seemingly upstanding official, but behind the scenes, it's a completely different story. Yeah. No wonder people are outraged. But okay, let's take a step back for a second. Okay. For those who might not be as up on Mexican politics. Right. Who exactly is Garcia Luna tied to in the government? And why is this causing such a massive uproar? So Garcia Luna, he was a big deal in the PAN party. Which was in power under former President Felipe Calderon. Right. And the PAM, just so everyone knows, that's the National Action Party. Okay. They're one of the major political parties in Mexico, kind of considered center-right. Okay. And they, well, they rose to power partly by saying they would combat corruption, you know, get rid of organized crime. Right. So to have one of their own, someone as high-ranking as Garcia Luna, convicted of working with these cartels. It's huge. It's a huge scandal. So we're not just talking about one man's crimes. No. This has major implications for this whole political party. Oh, absolutely. Who, by the way, are already trying to fight off this image of, you know, not being able to handle corruption. And that's what's really interesting here. This whole thing has created this blame game in Mexican politics. Oh, I bet. Yeah, the pen, they're trying to distance themselves from Garcia Luna now, right. saying it's all Calderon's fault. Like, he's the one who appointed him, not us. Of course. Yeah. But other political parties are saying, hold on a second. This isn't just about one bad apple. This shows there's a problem within the pan itself. Yeah. Like, sure, blame the guy who's not in office anymore, but this points to a much deeper issue right here. Wow. Yeah. So the center of this whole political firestorm, you have Calderon himself. Right. I mean, he was president during all of this, which leads to the big question, was he involved? Well, Calderon has said he's innocent, that he didn't know anything about Garcia Luna's criminal activities. Right. But unsurprisingly, not everyone's buying it. Especially given how people are reacting. I mean, there are protests, people demanding that he be held accountable. Yeah, there were even chants of, get this, Calderon knew right outside the courtroom. Wow. This has clearly hit a nerve. It speaks to a real lack of trust and this desire for transparency. People want answers. This whole thing is like a powder keg ready to explode. We've got this dramatic verdict, mm -hmm. yeah. a political blame game. Right. Everyone wondering if Calderon's next. And then to make things even stranger, there's Garcia Luna's wife. Oh, yeah. What was going on there? I know, right? Her reaction, or should I say lack of reaction, as she's leaving the courtroom, it's raised a lot of eyebrows. I mean, wouldn't you be devastated? You think so, right? Your husband just got sentenced to almost 40 years. Yeah. And she's almost smiling. It was bizarre. It was strange. One theory is that maybe it was strategic. Hmm. Like maybe there's some agreement behind the scenes. Okay. She stays calm. Maybe he gets a reduced sentence later on. Wow. Maybe their family gets some kind of protection. We don't know. This is better than any TV show I've seen lately. <laughs> but, okay, beyond all the drama, this case brings up some serious concerns about corruption, right? It definitely does. Okay. This isn't just some captivating story. It's a harsh reminder that corruption has real consequences. Right. I mean, if someone like Garcia Luna can be corrupted, 
Who else is involved? That's a scary thought. And what does this mean for the future of Mexico? Big questions. And for everyone listening, we're going to break it all down, not just the initial reactions, right. but what this could mean for Mexican politics and even beyond. Absolutely. So yeah. stay tuned. This is far from over. It's like this trial, you know, it's like it peeled back this layer of like normalcy and underneath it's wow, this whole other reality, you know? It's definitely shaken things up, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, if someone at Garcia Luna's level can be this deep in corruption, yeah. it makes you wonder how far it goes, you know? Yeah. And what it says about the whole system. It does feel like a big moment, like things are changing. Yeah, like a turning point. Yeah. We've seen these scandals before. Right. But this one feels different. Yeah, why do you think that is? Maybe it's how big these allegations are. Right. Or maybe it's just like the timing, you know? Like people already don't trust institutions as much. Right. But whatever it is, this case has definitely got people talking about accountability, about making some serious changes. And I think everyone's holding their breath like, is this going to actually change anything? Right. Will it actually lead to reforms or will it just fade away like all the others? Right. It's the million dollar question. It is. Some people say this conviction shows the system works. Yep. That even these high-ranking officials, they were not above the law. Right. They're like optimistic. See it as a good sign, you know? Okay. Like things are going in the right direction. But not everyone's convinced, right? right? Oh, absolutely not. There are definitely those who are way more cynical about it. Right. Right. They see it as like, oh, just another chapter in the same old story of corruption. Yeah. They say, sure, this conviction matters, uh -huh. but it doesn't fix the root of the problem. The system itself. Exactly. They talk about this culture of impunity, you know, mm. where corruption is so normal, it's almost expected. It's, a, it's just part of how things work. Exactly. Yeah. And for them, this case, it's just a symptom of this way bigger problem. So it's like we're at a fork in the road. One way leads to actual change like really fixing the system right, right and the other well it's just more the same right. right corruption keeps happening exactly and right now who knows which path we're gonna take yeah. but one thing's for sure like I said this case has forced everyone to pay attention this isn't a conversation we can ignore anymore speaking of things we can't ignore yeah what if Garcia Luna talks Oh, now that would be huge. Right. It would change everything. Like a political earthquake, right. Oh, yeah. Names getting thrown around. Secrets revealed. Right. Yeah, if he cooperates, gives up information for a shorter sentence, right. the impact could be insane. We could uh, see people at the highest levels brought down, maybe even beyond Mexico. Investigations, charges, maybe even governments toppled. Like House of Cards just collapsed. Complete chaos. But yeah. it could also be a chance to start fresh. You know, get rid of those corrupt networks, actually build something better and more transparent. OK, so the trial might be over. But this story, it feels like it's just beginning. Totally. And I don't know about you, but I am on the edge of my seat waiting to see what happens next, who gets caught in the crossfire. This whole thing. I mean, it's like we're watching a political thriller unfold in real time. It really is. And like. You know, with any good thriller, it's those layers of intrigue, right? Right. This isn't just about one corrupt guy. It's about this whole system. Maybe it's been broken for way too long, and now it's all coming undone. And we can't forget about that really strange detail we keep coming back to. What's that? Garcia Luna's wife. I mean, practically smiling after he gets a sentence. that They'll probably keep them apart forever. Oh, yeah. It's got to be a clue, right? Yeah, it's an image that sticks with you, doesn't it? And it raises so many questions. It does. Was it planned? Was she sending a message? Or was it just like a totally human reaction? We really don't know. We don't. So for everyone listening who's been following along with us, Hi. where do we even go from here? We've got this convicted kingpin, a political party that's falling apart, a former president in the hot seat, and this feeling that we're not even close to the end of it. It's a lot, that's for sure. And I think what we can take away from this with all the crazy twists and turns, it shows us that sometimes truth really is stranger than fiction. Right. And some of the most important stories are the ones that haven't even finished playing out yet. It reminds you to stay curious. Right. Oh, absolutely. Keep asking questions. Don't just accept things at face value. Because the truth has a way of coming out. Eventually. It always does. Even if it takes years, even decades. Exactly. So as we wrap this up, the question I'll leave you with is, what will this whole thing mean in the long run? Will it be the thing that finally changes how we fight corruption? Right. Or will it just fade away? I think the answer, in a lot of ways, depends on us. I think so, too. It's about staying informed, 
demanding transparency, holding those in power accountable. Because this fight, it doesn't stop with a guilty verdict. It's something we all have to be part of. I think that's a great place to leave it. That's all for today's Deep Dive. Thanks for listening.